Good morning and welcome to your pranayama and meditation practice today. Today we will be focusing on a full yogic breath, so dirga pranayama. So begin by getting yourself comfortable, coming to a seat on your yoga mat, maybe take a seat on a cushion or a pillow and rest your palms gently on your knees. And we'll just begin by centering ourselves in our practice first before introducing this pranayama. Begin by closing your eyes. And just notice your hands as they rest down on your knees, beginning to ground your energy, feeling the connection of your lower body on the earth the hands resting on your knees or in your lap and begin to elongate through the spine lifting up through the crown of the head drawing your shoulders back and down and staying open across the chest and when you feel ready beginning to blink your eyes open just gazing down towards the earth in front of you Letting the light come back in slowly, but your breath remaining smooth and natural. We will now begin a pranayama practice to connect to creating a deeper breath. So really filling up into a place of expansion throughout our entire torso. So many of us around our society tend to breathe in the chest only. That chest-based breath can create some more anxiety and tension within our bodies and our minds. So what we want to do is we want to try to draw the breath even farther down into the belly and feel this expansiveness from the lower abdomen all the way up towards the collarbones. But we're going to do this in some phases to begin. So starting off, I want you to bring both palms onto your lower belly. We're going to focus our breath on this area of the body and having the feedback of the palms here can help us find that expansiveness even more. You can close the eyes or you can gaze down or gaze forward at one spot, finding your drishti, your focal point. And as you breathe in through the nose, I want you to expand in the belly, feeling the belly gently press into the palms. And exhale, let that breath out either through the nose or the mouth, full release. Inhale, feeling expansiveness through the lower part of the belly, breathing in, and exhale, letting it go. So extending the legs forward, and this is also why we're elevating the hips. We're giving a little bit more space for the hamstrings, so we're not tensing or overstretching them, and we're giving more space for the pelvis to tilt forward. So extending this both feet onto the floor. First, coming into Dandasana, foundation of the seated positions, which is basically sitting with your legs extended, your fingertips on the sides, opening the chest forward. Fingers are pointing also forward here. Your, to your toes are flexed, pointing towards you, both kneecaps lifted. So the leg is active. This activation of the quadriceps also helps with this anterior tilt of the pelvis. So this is what we're looking for. We're looking for bringing this pelvis forward, this part of the hip forward here. So we can lengthen the spine a little bit more. So the more you elevate the hips, the easier it is to do this action here. And if even like this, you still have strain on the hamstrings, or if you feel like here, you're curving your lower back, you're sitting like this, bend your knees and come to a straight spine, finding your variation for this position. Again, we're opening the space between the sternum and the belly button, opening the chest forward. You can press the root of the big toes together and think about pressing your heels down and also pressing the sitting bones down to the floor. On your next inhalation, bring your arms out and up. And as you exhale, maintaining alignment of the spine, you start to fold forward, maybe grabbing your strap for this one and placing it on the ball of the foot. You can bend your knees to do that also, if it's too far away from you. Placing it on the balls of the foot, not on the middle, but more in this space, and extending. So folding forward, bring your shoulders down and back, so you're also helping 
with the shoulders, the alignment of the spine. So let's start with uh, one of the most popular definitions of yoga, which is uh, that yoga is the practice of union of uh, body, mind and soul. So both parts are equally important, union, yoga is the practice of union. The word yoga itself means to unite, to join, to bring together, to yoke, to include and so on. Yeah. So it's quite interesting to know that uh, before yoga became a spiritual word, it was actually a word used in mathematics also and still being used in Sanskrit language. So if I would want to say one plus one is two in Sanskrit, I would say one yoga one is two. So yoga actually means to add, to unite. And then eventually it became a word more in spiritual context. So what does yoga unite? Firstly, it unites my body, mind and soul. And this is the beauty of yoga everyone, that first it separates things it brings awareness to different aspects of ourselves and then it puts them together. So just like a scientist, just like a doctor, a surgeon, very intricately starting to move things away from each other to understand that subject, that object well, and then eventually bringing them together and seeing how they work well with each other. Yeah? So body, mind and soul. Yoga first tells us what is my body, how to take care of it. Usually in yoga, we do it through stretching or asanas. Then it talks about our mind, thinking mind, the one which is our thought space, how to train it, how to bring some quietness to it whenever we would like. And the third part is our soul. Soul is our center, the unchanging space, which we are and which watches all the changes of life experiences come and go. So this harmony, of body, mind and soul is uh, the first definition of yoga. The second definition is that uh, yoga is the practice of mind control or yoga is the practice of training the mind. So this is a very textbook definition of yoga coming straight from Patanjali Sutras. Separate your legs, hip distance, not too much. Good. And um, strong core. So you want to look into your middle body, holding tight, bracing the belly and activate your thighs and legs. Very nice. Heels are stacking over the toes and you want your shoulders to open up a bit. Not too much, but um, you don't want to crunch the shoulder because if you land in your chaturanga, it's going to give you trouble in your shoulders. Scapula especially is not rounded back. So different types of body actually engage the thighs more, more, more. And gently move your heels back a little bit, little bit, micro, micro, yes. Look forward, gaze forward. The common mistake is everyone looks down and then forget about the middle body. So spider grip is on, there's medial rotation, the elbows moving towards the body. Not too much, but a little bit. And drop the legs, relax. <laughs> Your arms are a little wider than your shoulders, so bring them under your shoulders, tiny. Good. This gives you more structural balance into your shoulders. So now, spider grip on, exhale, inhale, lift up, good. And keep your thigh strong, belly tight, keeping your heels over the toes, and this total engagement. We also learn all these poses from Dando Asana, like a stick pose. Stick pose is when you feel like your entire body is active, cell by cell. Look forward, open your shoulders a little bit, don't drop. The moment you shift the balance, um, awareness in your shoulders, you lose the balance. So you need to continue to look into your entire body and it's really hard to hold with your belly tight and breathe normally. Uh, nice, it's good. So drop the legs, relax, relax, sit down. So the common mistake for um, our plank is we generally a student would look down towards the ground. That changes the entire pose because when you're looking down, you're collapsing most of the time from your neck and shoulders. So first thing is to look forward. 
Happy days, happy people. Cody here, and welcome to your lecture on the anatomical position. So today we're going to be talking just about the basic anatomic position and some basic anatomy concepts and terms that we will be using throughout all of our anatomy lectures. And these are also things that you will see whenever you do any research deeper into anatomy yourself. So the reason I'm teaching you this stuff is because it's the very basic, and it gives you a language. It helps you converse in the anatomical field. You're going to learn a lot more concepts, a lot more definitions, but these are the very, very, very basics. And let's start with the basic position. So the anatomical position is the most basic position you can think of, and you all know it. If you've been doing yoga, you've done it a million times and that is this position right here. So it is mountain pose. Starting with your feet, like pillars beneath your legs. Nice little tuck in at the tailbone, rounding of the shoulders, and the palms facing forward. And this is the anatomic position. It is from this position that we make all of our references, right? So whenever we reference anything, we're referencing from this position. You notice that I'm not bending anywhere, everything is straight. And whether it's from the front or the back or the side, it's all from here. So if I move forward, I'm moving forward from this position. If I'm moving to the side, I'm moving to the side from this position. If I'm moving back, I'm moving back from this position. And everything is from this position. And in this position, we have a few key references that I've written on the board that are going to help us understand what we are referring to in terms of direction and movement. So the main thing that we need to start with first is the midline of the body. So the midline or the medial is the line that runs completely through the middle of the body. This line is again what we make most of our references from. Now, on the inhale, we're going to squeeze our knees in, squeeze our feet together, and we're going to drop, right? I'm not bending at my ankles, I'm bending at my knees, and I'm keeping my tailbone tucked. I'm going to drop, hands come down. As soon as I touch the ground, I inhale, sweep the hands up, chair pose. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale down again. Again, step or hop back into plank or chaturanga, your choice. Inhale, upward facing dog or cobra. And exhale, downward facing dog. From here, immediately we're going to inhale, raise that right leg up. And exhale, step it between the hands. Drop the left heel down and turn it to 45 degrees. If you need to take a wider step with that back foot, do so. From here, you're going to press up through your chest, bend that right knee, straighten that back leg, turn the hips forward, keep that tailbone nice and strong, glutes engaged, knee bent to 90 degrees, core engaged, shoulders forward, hands up, however you like, inhale here, and breathe in warrior one, Vira Badrasana A. Press with the outer edge of that back foot, bend with that front knee. If this is uncomfortable for your shoulders for any reason, hands to the heart center. Hold for five, four, three, two, and one. Inhale, straighten the front leg. Exhale, bend that knee, bring the hands back down, stepping that right foot back. Plank, again, your vinyasa, knees, chest, chin, or chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog or cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. <clears throat> now to do the other side. Inhale, left leg up. Exhale, stepping in between the hands, same measurements, dropping that right heel, finding what feels good for you, back foot at a 45 degree angle, lifting up through the chest. So my right foot goes through the swing and I want to keep the swing closest to my knee as possible. 
standing up straight and tall, engaging my core here, slowly taking a deep inhale, exhale, extend that right knee forward. I'm actually going to lift my left heel, making sure I have my balance here. And if I feel comfortable, raising my hands up towards the sky, opening in the front of my body, and then slowly bringing that right heel back down, holding onto the swing, pivoting my left foot out 90 degrees, bringing my hands up parallel to the ground, relaxing the shoulders, gazing over that right middle finger. Inhale, straighten the spine. Exhale, extend that right knee out. Now I want you to reach out with that right hand and then reach back with the left hand and come back to neutral. Flip that right palm up towards the sky. Inhale, bring that right hand up towards the sky. Taking a few breaths here, connecting back in with your ujjayi breath. And then bringing that right elbow onto your right thigh. Left arm goes up towards the ceiling. And instead of crimping down into your thigh, really try to extend, open up space on that right side of your rib cage. Pressing your right arm into your right thigh, reaching up with the left hand. And coming back out, bringing your hands down, grabbing onto the swing here. Pivot that left foot again. And this time, holding on to the swing, I want you to lean back. And what we'll do is just a little bit of swinging. So leaning back here, I can lift my left foot, hook it with my right, and just give myself a little bit of a swing. Woo! And coming back down, dropping that left foot as I'm on my way back. So similar to the other poses, we're going to spot from the hips as well. And again, finding a warrior stance or a goddess stance, whatever is comfortable for you. Just a note on this, spotting for this pose, you want to be slightly behind the flyer. So not directly, but we're not standing on the side anymore. Slightly behind because the risk is that they fall backwards in this pose. Okay. So I follow them up, supporting the hips here. Waiting for them to come all the way up. Now my view is slightly blocked, so I'm going to switch sides. So I'm in a warrior stance, supporting around the hips. If they were to fall back towards me here, because I'm behind them, she can't go anywhere. She's only going to fall into me. Okay. If I'm on the side, that's more dangerous. There's more chance I can't spot this very effectively. Okay. So that's why we want to be slightly behind. Sorry for the <laughs> extreme example. Nice. And if they're good again, we can hover, but stay nice and present, of course, because if they fall anyway, we want to be there to support and stabilize. And there's another thing for you as a flyer, when it things falling apart, please keep your body engaged and don't panic. You can bend even deeper, Brent, just to make it a bit more comfortable for her. Nice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. flyer's hands, face's hands. Nice, very good. You can bend your knees slightly to help the hook. Yes, now allow him to sit up first. Let's come down quickly. Okay. That was perfect, but it's just a tiny uh, adjustment. Minty, would you place the foot a little bit wider? Cool. So that's a good example of how you don't need to force the pose every time. It's perfectly good to come down, reset, and try again. Nice. So just a note on that. It was a little bit of a struggle for Brent to sit up there, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, and the reason for that was the legs were fully extended and straight. So if you connect your hands again, stay there, yeah, and just bend the knees a little bit. Now, this time, when Brent wants to sit up, so then fair bit easier, then you can legs. press the legs up. Nice. Minty, bring your legs towards Caspian more. Yeah, Caspian there. More. Okay. and lock your knees fully thank you so much for watching our video if you are at all interested in learning more about yoga or becoming a yoga teacher then check out our online trainings or even go to one of our live trainings in Copenhagen and bali and if you feel like there's something that's urging you to do it 
then why not follow your flow and keep being awesome. See you soon.